Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fifth episode in my Materialized CSS mini-series. Now, in this video, we are going to be covering the topic of side navs, or, um, you know, they're also called mobile nav bars. And basically, uh, the gist is, is especially when you have a larger nav bar on a website, unlike this one on Google here, but if it's like actually taking up quite a bit of room, you might need um, to have it kind of collapse into itself when the screen gets too small. Because imagine these buttons or these you know links here are taking up like half the half the screen width. Well, what happens when you get small enough uh, to the point where if they were still taking up half, they would be too small. The buttons, then you should just collapse them, remove them entirely, and create a side nav. Um, and to kind of illustrate what that means, because I know it can be a little bit difficult if you've never seen one. As you can see here on my website, as um, you you see, there's a regular nav here, but as I uh, size down my website, and when it becomes too small. It will all collapse here, and then there will be this little side nav that you can pull out, which is pretty cool. So it's this three little hamburger menu, and it pulls out a side nav that lets you access the pages like that. So um, that's the gist of what we'll be um, making using some of the materialized framework, and then we'll be adding a little bit of custom CSS just to make it look a little bit better. And, um, and you know, again, you can always augment what this library and other libraries give you to create cool-looking layouts. So um, we're going to start off with a quick recap, and I'm going to try a little bit different style with my files uh, today. I'm going to grab um, this index.html, I'm going to plop it up here, and I'm going to keep kind of our little agenda here just present the whole time, and I'll, I'll scale this down a little bit so it's not taking up as much room, but it'll just be there down um, at the bottom. Um, so just to quickly recap what's going on, um, in this uh, in the previous video, we went over creating a nav bar. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the go live button so that we can see it visually. Um, by writing all of this code here, by creating a header um, and giving it nav bar fixed, you can see I'm scrolling here on the right side, but um, the nav bar is staying. If I removed that uh, class, if I uh, just remove the class altogether, uh, notice now when I scroll, the nav bar kind of stays at the top. And it, uh, like, you know, a lot of websites, some websites do have them uh, fixed. Like, you can, you know, you can basically customize if you want it to be or not. Aside from that, we have this div that is the nav wrapper, which is inside the nav uh, element itself. The nav wrapper holds the logo, which just says logo. We could change it to my site or anything, and notice it changes right there. And when you click on it, it doesn't go anywhere because the href, aka the kind of destination that the link is going or the anchor tag is going, is nowhere if it's a hash or it's going specifically to the top of the website. Um, uh, usually, that's what a hash means. So um, yeah, that's that's how we use a brand logo. And then uh, naturally, we also have the UL, which is part of every nav bar, uh, and it has all of the links: link active, link link and link. Uh, and actually, the reason why this one isn't highlighted is because we need to give the li a class of active which will uh, highlight it or darken it a little bit. And if we remove that, it will all be uniform color like this. So that is the gist of creating a nav bar using materialize as we covered in the previous episode. What I am gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and keep all of this since the side nav is um, a, it's kind of an upgrade on top of a nav bar. So I'll, I'll illustrate that really quick. I'll, uh, I'll search up the materialize uh, documentation, just hit here. Uh, and yeah, that's funny. Uh, they they actually have their little uh, side nav here, since the screen is a little bit too small for me to use. Uh, although I think it it's actually there the whole time. Nope. See, they they have this actual side menu, but then when your screen gets small enough, then it's just this hamburger, and you can pull out, and then you can click on components and nav bar, and it is near the bottom where it says mobile collapse button, uh, and that's basically implementing this hamburger. So uh, now that we're here, uh, we completed the quick recap. I want to quickly actually go over, uh, let me add one more item here, uh, icons. That's just a quick side um, a side topic, but um, the navbar hamburger icon uses uh, the materialize icon set, which is based on the material design icon set created by Google. Um, just to show off what that means, um, I can come to this... Uh, I'm actually not sure which entry it is, but we can search icon, icons.html right here. So we've included 932 materialized design icons courtesy of Google. You can download them from this website. Um, and then also they have a big list right here. 
So uh, we are basically looking for the menu icon, which is this one here. Uh, and that's the kind of hamburger menu that we use. You can actually use any of these icons in your website by simply creating, uh, let's just say we wanted to make a, uh, a H1 that says H1 that says hello world. And then like we wanted to put maybe a, a light bulb outline. Then what we can do is we can grab the name of this icon here, which I'll, I'll type in the E manually if I can't select it, that's fine. And then basically we create an I tag. Um, now the the gist is, is an i tag actually will normally italicize um, our our text by normal HTML, but materialize basically makes the i tag so that it turns it into a icon that is specified by these materialized icons. So this is kind of a custom HTML uh, that that materialize has added into their framework. So if we just paste in the um, name of the icon, you can see uh, as you can see here. Right now, it's not currently working, um, and that we, we can see that because the text is actually being italicized instead of uh, turned into our icon like we're looking. And let me just make sure, okay, so it's still being italicized. So let me just uh, check the documentation to make sure I'm using this correctly. Right, um, so they actually even say it here. In order to use these icons, you must include this line, which I do not believe I have. Yeah, see, it's not here. I've just included the library and the uh, JavaScript, but I haven't included the icons, which you can grab by, again, coming here, searching icons, and then it'll take you to icons.html, and you can grab this link right here. And once you have that, um, and I save, notice now, uh, or not, <laughs> oh, okay, there we go. See, I'm missing another piece. Uh, you have to add the class of material icons into the i tag. And once we finish all of that, uh, we should finally get a light bulb. Uh, and basically, if I grab this now and I stick this back into the H1, we should get it right here. If this thing is too small, of course, we can upsize it simply by... Um, I'm actually not sure if it's using font size. Let's, let's check it out and see if it is. Uh, yeah, it seems like it is using font size, so we can set it to something like 100 pixels or maybe uh, 80 pixels. So basically, this light bulb is counted as a character. As you can see, uh, somewhat, it's acting a little weird, but um, it basically, by the library, is being counted as a character, so we can set it a font size, and it will grow and shrink along with, um, along with everything, uh, everything else with its text. So that's just a cool thing you can do. Um, so that was a small little tangent, and the reason for that is simply because we do have to include this hamburger icon uh, in our navbar, so I didn't want you to be confused while we were doing that. So I'll come back here to this mobile collapse and let me check this off. So to implement a side nav, um, we can read here. You have to, re or when your nav bar is resized, you will see that the links on the right turn into a hamburger icon. Uh, you have to add the entire side nav trigger <clears throat> to your uh, to your actual nav code. So if we take a look at this example here, um, we have the regular uh, kind of kind of a nav bar set up here, except they've added this line here. That says a href. It's it's the same thing as the brand logo basically, but instead it has a class of side nav trigger, and what's inside is that hamburger icon, which is named menu. So uh, if we grab this little uh, this little line here, and we add that in right here. So again, let's let's go through this line. It's a, it's basically an anchor, aka a link. So you can click on it. Uh, its data target is called mobile demo, and we can just say. Instead of naming it mobile then demo, we can just name it side nav, class is side nav trigger, and then the icon is the uh, menu icon, which now we can see it kind of intersecting with our little um, our little text here. And actually, we, we're going to fix that little collision in a bit, but for now, we'll, we'll leave it. So let's go ahead and look at the initialization, um, or actually, no, we have to finish up the HTML because in addition to just adding the side nav trigger, we actually have to add the side nav itself, which is a separate unordered list. Uh, and we actually will add it outside of the nav. So you see there's this nav here. It's still inside the header, obviously, but uh, it is outside of the nav itself. This is the side nav. The ID is side nav because um, remember we had the data target. It was set to mobile demo, but now it is side nav. Um, in fact, that might be. Uh, that might be a little confusing. So side nav list, maybe we'll, we'll just keep it a slightly different name. Um, so that should work just fine. And uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to temporarily uh, center our brand logo. Uh, 
and actually remember we are using flex now so what I'm just gonna do uh, is set the margin just just this is very temporary but set the margin left to auto and the margin right to auto which should center it if I was not mistaken although I guess there's something wrong with this um, oh, that's why. So I'll just remove this. I'll uh, make sure to set it in here instead. So basically, I can set the margin left left to auto, which theoretically should push it over to the right. But um, yeah, there we go. So after removing this left here, we can move the margin left to auto, and then I can set the margin... Actually, no, that's probably not a good way to center things. So what I'll do temporarily is I'll just justify the content to uh, center for the nav itself. Um, I'll set this left back to zero. Um, align right, we'll set margin left to auto. And then what if I set margin right to auto? Hmm. This is acting slightly weird. Not like I would expect, but you know what? We'll just we'll just uh, bring this back to normal here. Uh, I'm actually curious as to what is going on with this positioning, so I'm gonna open up in the inspector just to kind of investigate what's going on. So we're gonna open up our nav, and we see we have the nav wrapper, which is a, a display of flex. So this is our flex container. This is the brand logo. And then that is the link, and then that is the unordered list with a line of right. Now I'm wondering why the brand logo is kind of on its own over here. Uh, what if I just remove display block? I don't know if that'll help. Um, right, so I, I have a feeling it has to do with the, with the, um, the generic uh, styles applied. Yeah, I see. So there's this left 50% that is applied. Um, and what I'll actually do is I'll just set left to auto so it can decide for itself. So yeah, again, this is part of the trial and error process, partially due to the fact that Materialize sets a lot of the styles, and we kind of need to investigate and figure out which ones we want to reverse uh, in order to get the styling that we want. But uh, after doing that, I believe if I set the flex to center now, that should work. Uh, and there's a little bit of overlap just because of the sizing here, but um, for the most part, the logo is now centered, um, and I think display block wasn't an issue. So yeah, we now have a centered um, logo, and again, the problem again was that the, the left was being set by materialized, so I can change it so that left is now figuring it out for itself, which is the default value, so I'll just, uh, I set it back basically. And then now that we want to check if this uh, hamburger is working, we need to basically come here into this initialization section because in order to get our nav, our side nav to work, we actually need to use some JavaScript. So I'm going to go ahead and basically make a script tag right here and I'll just make it a source of uh, script.js so we can create a simple script.js file. And if you're not familiar with JavaScript, I recommend you check out either my introduction or my JavaScript for Beginners tutorial series if you're interested in learning the language, or if you already know it and just want to know your applications, I would recommend checking out the JavaScript related videos in my introduction to web development tutorial series, uh, which I will most likely leave a card to in the top right. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy our, um, there's two options. We can use jQuery, which I'm not going to be using because that's a, another library that we have to link to or install. Um, instead, I'll just be using the native JavaScript method. So all we're doing here is we're getting the document, which is the HTML. We are uh, adding an event listener, DOM content loaded, which means this will run when our website content loads. And we will run this function here. All this function will do is it will basically select all of the side nav elements. And it will um, call this function called m.sidenav.init, which is created by this script right here. You can see we have a script. Uh, source that is basically the materialized JavaScript portion um, and it creates this M object where we can initialize our side nav. So now notice that um, at least in theory 
we should have a working side nav. Let me just, we need to work out all of the small issues that might arise. Let me quickly debug, hello, um, and we'll inspect, make sure this is showing up. See, we're getting an error, options is not defined. So uh, as you can see, to look further into here, options is actually going to be an object, um, which I'm not sure if they tell you that this documentation might be a little bit lacking. But um, the gist is, is options is actually an object in JavaScript where we can supply different uh, objects or options to our side nav. Like usually they'll give you an option to change the speed that it animates and stuff like that. But for now, we'll just be leaving it default. And as you can see now, we get this nav bar. Uh, and notice when we click on this, the links are actually different than what we have here. And the reason for that is we actually do have um, two separate sections for where we are holding our things. So we can just basically copy and paste. And now we should get the active link, active link, 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 uh, which will link up our side nav. So perfect. Uh, now we have a fully working side nav. Um, and I'm not sure if we're going to have enough time to actually cover these two. So um, I will actually move these and defer these into a, another video. So yeah. I keep running a little bit slower than I intend to, but I will definitely get to these two in the next one. I'll probably just make up, you know, somewhat of a part two for this side nav video um, and cover these two tomorrow. So if you want to see more videos like this on Materialize and just in general web development and software engineering, uh, specifically for Materialize, I recommend you checking out the playlist, which is linked in the description, where I cover everything about the framework. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications whenever I post new videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.